really, really good, and people good, yeah. dug it, and you know. But until then, nobody had ever heard of Bruce Springsteen. They didn't know where he was from. They didn't know what he was about. Um, you know, Bruce Springsteen had this. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen had this image of being a really elitist guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he's up there in his ivory tower, That's what everybody thought, drinking his champagne, and uh, he said, "No, no, no, I'm a, I'm a regular guy, and to prove it to you, I will do a Christmas song." And so that's what he did, was he did a Christmas song. So Born in the USA was the first compact disc made in these United States. Remember the first, this is going to sound really stupid because your guys' first CDs were going to be much different than mine, but do you remember the first CD you bought? Were, were they, were they given I to you? I bought or well, that I just had? Did people start gifting you CDs before you bought one? Or yes. Was it, yeah, they did. I got... Um, I said, hey, check out this new fangled... Uh, thing. So my birthday is November 25th, one month before Christmas. And the, mm. the one year for my birthday and Christmas, I got a CD player. Um, it was so cool. It was like flat and it opened like at you oh. and you like put, the, which by the way meant it never played correctly because you right. put the CD in standing up. Yeah. So it was always like wobbling Sharper around. Sharper image or something. Right. Yeah. So I got the CD player and then I got Big Willie style, Will Smith CD. And Backstreet Boys Millennium. Those were my that was my Christmas and birthday present was the CD player and those two CDs. Okay. And actually, I think I got now that's what I call music. I think it was volume eight. I think that was the one. Or volume nine. One of those one of those two. So I got a couple CDs in the CD player. Now that's what I call music, volume nine. I think it was either eight or nine. Hmm. My first CD was Purple by Stone Temple Pilots, that album. Really? You bought yeah. it or the it was given scene. to you? I was, I just, I don't know if it was like bought by my mom. Like she was like, we'll get you guys some CDs so you don't have to listen to your dad's music. And that was one that I picked out. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think my brother, because we were all into that grunge music. So one of my brothers got Alice in Chains. One of my brothers got uh, Pearl Jam and I got Stone Temple Pilots. And I think we also got Collective Soul, maybe. Nobody will know mine. My first two uh, DVD or CDs that I bought, one was a band called Blue Murder, which is full on. Uh, Stansbury might still play the song called Jelly Roll on Big Hair Wednesdays every once in a while. Let me see that jelly roll. <laughs> it was not. That jelly roll. It was not. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be Tootsie Roll? It was a, this, <laughs> this is the rock version. Oh. The rock version. <laughs> Let me see that jelly roll. Butterfly. Oh, that's old. Let me yeah. see that jelly roll. It was a band called Blue Murder. It was kind of like a super group. It was a guy that had been in White Snake, and it was at Carmine Appice playing the drums. And then I bought the first Bullet Boys record mm. on CD. And I didn't even have, like, a CD deck. I had, like, it was the thing you're talking about was portable or no? No, it was... It was... I had a disc man. Okay. I so got I one. had to put... I had to get the aux lines and a splitter in my disc man to, play to put studio. tinny little yeah. speakers oh, next yeah. to it yeah. in my dorm room because I couldn't afford a proper stereo. Those are my first two, two CDs. Back then, though, Columbia House would still, when they, you know, transitioned from cassettes to CDs, uh, the, and hold your CDs, jokes, by the way. I see the phone's ringing already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, when they made that transition... You're doing the same thing. Yeah, give me 40 CDs for a nickel. Because nobody knew what the hell, you know, it was. They used to sell them in the long boxes. They called them long boxes. And they were cardboard. Because I used to work across the street from a Tower Records. And it was a big deal when CDs came out. They were in these long boxes because they thought, well, nobody can steal these. They're in long cardboard boxes. Not realizing that people would just fold because it was a CD at the bottom, but then a long, empty, thin cardboard container. Mm -hmm. People would just fold it and put it in their coat. And then they, that's when they transitioned to, like, those the hard plastic, plastic yeah. skeleton yeah. kind of things. Because they're like, well, who's going to be able to steal these? People will always find a way to steal. They always will. They will. The first CD I bought was Pink Misunderstood. Misunderstood. Oh, my God, Mary, we're twins. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. that's, man, Mine that... 
Pink Misunderstood, and I it was the Pink album, and it had her like ripping her shirt. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it was. I thought she was laying down. I thought she was laying down on the cover. No, that it. was on the cover, but yeah. on the actual CD. Okay, okay, yeah. It was her with like a ripped shirt, and she's like showing her cleavage, and it was very inappropriate. And I remember asking mom, I'm like, this has parental advisory. She says ass in this. Can I listen <laughs> to this? And she was like, well, just don't listen to that song. I was like, but it's the best song, mom. It's I'm coming <laughs> no, up. No, you just say okay. I won't. Yeah, right. And then you listen to it anyway. No, no, it was, uh, I won't. I'm coming up, so you coming better out. get this party started. I'm coming up. I'm coming. Coming out. Coming right. out. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming, coming out. out. Oh, so you bet, better get this party started. And by the way. I don't know. I thought she was on an elevator going to, like, the penthouse suite. Are you thinking of Diana Ross <laughs> and P. Diddy? I'm coming up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want the world to know. So you better get the party started. I That was always very, um, it was very uh, presumptuous of her, by the way. Pink? Yeah, like if you're going to go to a party and let some friends know, I know this is pretexting, but if you're going to let some friends know, hey, I'm coming, you might give them a time range. Mm -hmm. But if somebody would say to you, hey, you better get the party started because I'm coming, people would be like, oh, sorry. Gosh. I'm only halfway through my preparations. But she, here's the thing, that's why she's misunderstood. Alan. Yeah, but that's not easy to misunderstand. I know what she's saying. You better have that party started. By the time I get there. Now, if she got there and the party wasn't started, would she leave? And could know. you start it a mere two minutes before she got there? As long as it started. As long what, as it Mary, started. What actually, I mean, yes, you can say the party starts at 7, but when does a party really start? Like, when what's, Pink gets there. What's, Question no, mark. it should be started before <laughs> she gets there. Mary, can, can, yes. can I guess your favorite song on that You're going to get it. I know you're going to get it. Family Portrait. Yes! <laughs> what? <laughs> Because it was the, that, mm-hmm. that album came out either the year of or the year after my like parents got divorced. Two thousand one or yeah, my dad my dad left in two thousand one, which was sixth grade, and then oh, I, that's the guidepost for all of your CD. One hundred percent. Yeah. Well, because then I got was that, it pre dad leaving or post dad leaving? I got that CD in yeah. seventh grade, which was the following year, and me and my younger sister listened to Family Portrait over oh and God. over, crying. I just remember listening like to nobody. That. Gets us. <laughs> this was back in the day where I wasn't Nobody ashamed to listen to the music that I listened to. Because now, unless I'm in my car, you don't know what music I'm listening to because I'm probably ashamed of it. Um, but back then, I would just blast it in a boombox. And I remember my stepsister, uh, like 15-year-old black girl, she comes in. She's like, what are you listening to? And she's like, I was like, Family Portrait by Pink. She's like, this is some deep shrimp. Mm-hmm. And she walks out of the room. Yeah, dude. She's like, what is this? That whole that whole album I related to so hard. That one and then like Just Like a Pill. Because it's about a broken family? Or, yeah. Yeah, okay. me yeah, Just Like a Pill Ooh, is like, a and I didn't do you know? drugs or drink or anything like that, but I, I related to like her feeling so like alone the in the world and like nothing is helping. I'm just numb to everything. Well, these are the sad songs. Just Like a Pill and Family Portrait are the sad songs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, this is one of those things where, like, they didn't make music for happy families like mine. So I am out there with nothing. (laughs) (laughs) With two parents that just love each other and get along. that's right. Everything's just going great. Uh Pink doesn't got a song about that. No, she did not. (laughs) Oh, God. I knew it. As soon as I I was like, your favorite album was misunderstood. Yeah, you knew it was family. Misunderstood. You knew it was family portrait. My girlfriend, uh, Lauren, who is my best friend in seventh grade, her parents were going through like a Rocky Point too, so we when we would get together, we would listen to that song real loud too. My favorite song on that album was not uh, just like a pill. It was uh, Sixteen Wheeler. Do you I remember? Don't know that if I remember that one. Oh, it was like you can push me out the window. You can I'll push me get... out the window. Yes, I'll just. So Mary's friends up. lived in Rocky Point, North Carolina, and they were having a hard time. Hmm. I mean, listen, every artist has one good song. And mm-hmm. Pink's is Who Knew. That's her one good song. Who knew? I thought it overdosed. Everybody, uh, Alan asked Poundcake why Pink was initially a rapper before switching. She wasn't. She, she uh, was like trying to be pushed heavy in the urban scene, her, I think. I mean, I'll, her, I'll take your word for it. I don't know. L.A. Reid, they, they've talked about this. Uh, she had no control over, over her image or her music when she first got signed. So L.A. Reid was trying to push her as like a down urban chick from like, I don't. I think she's, she's from, from Philly. From Philly, yeah. So this uh, popular genre, this six-letter genre, this genre, mm. and and you know the black community embraced her. They liked her because she was like in the scene. That's how she came up. From she had a very soulful voice. Great ass. Yeah, I'm sure they loved her soulful voice. Her Great ass. Her second album was misunderstood, and that's when she kind of like tro- 
like uh, crossed over into like pop. Was she, she trying to say that people misunderstood her as a rapper? Uh, they misunderstood who she was as a oh, person. Oh, as a person. Right. But no, she had some hits when she was Aren't we all people. misunderstood in some way? As a person? To a person? Misunderstood. Mm-hmm. I remember she oh. came out with Stupid Girls. That was a fun song. Hmm. Pink's great, man. She's very talented. Boy, when she, you see her do those ribbons on stage and well, you're like, God That's exactly bless what her. I was about to say. She, She's no spring chicken anymore. The first co- t- concert I ever went to, like real concert, was Justin Timberlake, his sexy back tour at the oh, God, uh, Romo Fijo, mm-hmm. whatever it was then, the cue, the gun, right, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, and Pink was his opener. So Pink opened, and I was like crazy excited to see Pink, and she did all those ribbon dances or whatever. What does that call it? Acro- ribbon acrobatics? I don't know, but she does. The people know what you're talking <laughs> I about. I hope though. she had a ribbon dancer. <laughs> she didn't have a ribbon just dancer. Like, that wasn't correct. The stick. With the, <laughs> the just, stick. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> no. no. This is me. You misunderstood. <laughs> They yeah. tangle themselves in the ribbons and they and come it, down. Yeah, and yeah it's, she, it's very intricate, and she's fallen on her head a couple times. And yeah, suffered for her art. There's viral video of her fallen when a like a harness got loose or something. So yeah, she did that, and I was like, man, that's insane. And then Justin Timberlake killed it. That was the first time I had seen anybody perform live, and I was like, 17, and I was so turned on. I was like, oh my god, because that was like a sexy album anyway, yeah. the Sexy Back album, and then um, Summer Love. Was was the the song that he had like the girl on stage that he was like doing the little oh yeah like the little dances and they were flirting and they're like grinding on each other and I'm like oh my god uh huh I love this uh-huh. my first yeah. well that's concert. why he was in the best boy band and <laughs> sing my first concert was an MGK concert this one at First Energy Stadium that's so exciting for you no. man that's a lot of fun to see your first show at 29 and three quarters <laughs> in a stadium oh it's the best. Congratulations, buddy. No, but I didn't have any money to go to any shows, so there was he was giving a show at Akron at our E.J. Thomas Hall stage door. That was a cool part. It's like our version of the House of Blues, but you walk in through the stage door, and then he performs on the stage with, like, the the chairs and everything behind him. He crowd-surfed a person, like he stood on someone's back, and then the crowd held up the person that he was standing on, and that's literally how that's he literally surfed a person. So that was the coolest concert I ever I remember Panky gave me a clip from that show years ago. MGK. I ran to the supermarket late last week and I had to record That sounds like a man. If that was your first show, it'd be so exciting. Alan Cox Show After Hours line. Anytime you want to leave us messages there, you can. Still there for you. 216-986-8903. Hey, gang. Hey, gang. It's Mike, Mike from Wadsworth. Wadsworth. Uh, Mary, regarding, Mary, regarding your, your boyfriend, boyfriend annoying, annoying car parking, parking habits, habits. I, used I used to work, work with, with a guy named John. John. And it was a oh, yeah, your boyfriend parks in the back 40, right? Yeah. Of any parking lot. Mm-hmm. you got to take the tram can. in. Right. Yeah. Business that shared a parking lot with us, and the manager of that business bought himself a nice new Camaro, and he also parked obnoxiously far from the building. So as a prank, John and I would park all the way out where he was, directly on either side of him, and sandwich him in. And that lasted about a week or two before he figured out who it was and got in trouble. And a similar prank, we used to go to uh, movies together. And if you ever go to a matinee on any given Tuesday or Wednesday, a week or two after a movie's release, it's a guarantee there will be one solitary, nerdy-looking guy sitting, sitting right in the middle of the theater. theater. <clears throat> and we and used to also sit on either side of them and stand with them, them and straight face until, until they got annoyed got enough, enough to say something, something which sometimes took a long time. time. So uh, uh, what, I'm what I'm getting, getting at is, is if you're in need of my services, services I will be at the Rise Against Concert, concert tonight. tonight. I, I want to get through you guys, Mary, so you can find me in the cheap seat. I'll be I'll wearing, wearing a T-shirt, t-shirt that says, Hey, Mary, it's Mike from Wadsworth. Come to me. All right, bye. Oh, man, that's so convenient for you. Well, Thank you, Mike. That's going to be a lot of fun. He's coming down with my sister and her fiancé, so he won't be driving tonight. But we're in the cheap seats, too, because we I guess got the I same always, tickets. I always assume, I guess it's silly to assume, but I always assume that people who are parked way out are employees. No. Because a lot of places will tell, at least back in the day, they would tell people, Hey, don't take up customer parking spots. Don't Park out good there. good spots. Huh? Yeah. You yeah, don't take the good yeah. spots. But he parks way out there. He parks because he doesn't want anybody near his car. Yeah. Well, and what's wrong with getting a couple of steps there's, walking up to there's the... There's nothing wrong with it. But there are days when I'm annoyed or not in the mood. I don't want to walk a mile to the grocery store. I will say, <laughs> my father-in-law has a handicap tag. I will say, 
you get spoiled if you're with somebody who has a handicap. Tank. My dad had one. They pull right in, mm-hmm. and you go, "I'm okay walking. This, well, this is, is pretty great. cool." Yeah. yeah. Well, then when we, whenever we take, if we come to something downtown, we always bring my car because he doesn't like parking in parking garages, and if he does, he no exaggeration will park on the roof in one of like the furthest corner spots so he can position himself away from everything and then we're up on the ninth floor or whatever um so whenever i drive anywhere and i'm like screw it put it on the street fill the meter he's always like all right this is pretty nice <laughs> Just, that's you know. why i always if i'm riding shotgun with gwen i always tell her to park in expectant mother parking i'm like they don't know what your situation <laughs> is <laughs> right they don't know when your last ovulation was Get over here and disprove it. Your cycle. Yeah. Uh, let me take a break here. Our friend Ryan Dalton is back in Cleveland. He's doing uh, hilarities. He's headlining hilarities on Sunday, but he's also going to be with our friend Steve Byrne uh, over the course of the weekend. Steve's going to be here tomorrow. We're going to catch up with Ryan Dalton a little bit later on. Five o'clock, I will have that next keyword for you to get you and a friend out to Vegas uh, next month for our iHeartRadio Music Festival. So be listening for that keyword, 35192, if you want to text here, and we'll be back. It's the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app. Or whatever.